Um, this is a review of the Heckler & Coke 45 compact, chambered obviously in 45 automatic. Um, now basically this was H&K's answer to the Joint Combat Pistol program. It, uh, it was one of their candidates to replace the uh, the armed services 9mm Beretta and it went through all the trials okay passed with flying colors but uh no pistol was chosen okay that being said um I'm gonna go ahead and clear this weapon okay now um Let's get into the features of this firearm. I mean, basically, if you look at it, it looks like a basically a modernized USP at first glance. I mean, you got the uh, foreign serrations. If you want to do a half cock, see if you got a round in there. It does have a loaded chamber indicator, but uh. It's not really highly visible and sometimes if it's not cleaned correctly it can get jammed either in or out I mean you can see how you can barely kind of see the red but it's it's more pronounced okay firearm loaded I don't know if you can see it or not all right let's clear it again But uh, yes, it was loaded. I mean, after all, what good's a unloaded firearm? But uh, I put close to around 200 rounds through it, and I bought it used. So on the round count sheet, I've just got basically uh, X plus 200 and some change. All right, now um, let's let's get into the night sights. Okay, I've heard heard a lot of people online you know bitching about these sites oh you know you gotta charge them up you gotta charge them up now here's my theory behind that okay now if you're wearing MVGs okay really you don't want these sights in your face under MVGs for the simple purpose that even a cigarette under MVGs looks like a freaking road flare so if you have these things charged and hang on, let me show you real quick. Just hit it. Right now, I'm hitting it with the uh, CFL, you know, all three sights for about five seconds. Now, let's see. Give me a second. Now, see, that is, I mean, that that's plenty right there. And I mean, the reason you wouldn't want that happening all the time so like I said, <coughs> under night vision goggles, it could pose a problem. Now that being said, okay, more features, right? This is a variant one, okay? So it's got the standard double action, single action, okay? Decocker with safety, okay? Now it does have uh, 1913 rails they're a little stubby so that's kind of the tricky part is finding uh you know accessories to to fit onto that but after all it is a compact and why would you need something like that if you're concealed carrying i mean it's for personal defense not offense let's be realistic here people um all right Let's go ahead and get into disassembly. I mean, it's it's pretty much like any USP. Just want to cock it back there. Pull out the slide release pin. Similar to most, I mean, H and K's. Okay. And the slide just slides right off, and you're halfway field stripped there. Now this, the first time I disassembled it, kind of caught my eye. You see the. Uh, same Browning high power setup. Okay, now this little guy. 
This is actually a buffer assembly. Now the cool thing about this, this whole setup, it kind of comes together and makes uh, the firearm kick about like a 40 caliber. Okay, you know, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they'll get scared of the 45 auto round and say, you know, well, it's, uh, it just kicks too much, you know, I can't get enough rounds down range. And, uh, well, guess what? Your excuses are gone. Now you can put the, uh, you know, the size round you want down range without having to worry about, you know, follow up shots, shot placement. On the uh, on the trigger, I think the uh, double action comes in at about 12 pounds, and single action on the variant one is anywhere from five to four pounds. So I mean, it's a pretty good trigger pull. I mean, the double action has me. Uh, I mean, first shot I need to work on has me pulling a little bit to the left, but uh, aside from that. I mean, I can't fault this gun. I really can't. Um, 200 plus rounds, no jams, no malfunctions, nothing. I mean, steel case, brass case, tool of ammo, anything. It'll eat anything. I haven't, uh, haven't put any hand loads through it yet, but I don't intend to hot load it. You know, uh, I just really don't want to do that. But uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and do reassembly. And I mean, well, we didn't take the barrel out, so y'all could see that. I miss one important factor of this gun. It does have in the barrel, similar to the USP Tacticals, a O-ring right here. Um, it helps the side and the barrel um, lock up. You know for more accurate shots if these do break you know during firing it can fire fine without it I mean just put another one on there when you get around to it but let's go back into reassembly I mean it's pretty cut and paste <coughs> barrel back in put the recoil assembly back in and again this is whoever thought of this as it doesn't look like much but it actually does absorb a lot of the recoil and it seats right here in the frame so when that pistol recoils it's gonna catch part of the recoil spring here absorb a lot of the recoil but it is it does kind of have a flip up to it when you're shooting okay but uh, it's it's manageable like I said manageable all right slide back on throw your mag release pin back in and that's it I mean yeah now there there is a couple of different magazine variations for this you can get it this is an eight round mag standard okay with a finger rest plate on it you can get one that's flush without the finger rest plate which I I don't know why you would but I guess for concealed carry, I mean, this isn't that huge a deal for concealed carry. It doesn't really poke out that much. And in addition to that, you can use um, H and K USP 45 magazines for this as well, and the regular uh, 10 round H and K 45 magazine with an elephant on it. So you can do 10 plus one of this. Do an eight plus one now. But uh, that is the HK45C. Thanks for watching.